my name is jessie today's topic is diseases related to mouth esophagus and stomach the objectives are related to different diseases of human body that is mouth esophagus and stomach signs symptoms and prevention of each related organ disease the role of nutrients and nutritious food about each disease that is dietary management first we will see about the mouth our mouth is the one of the most important parts of our body any problem that affects our mouth can make it hard to eat drink or even smile in human anatomy the mouth is the first portion of the alimentary canal that receives food and saliva the oral mucosa is the mucous membrane epithelium lining the inside of the mouth Treatment for the mouth disorders varies depending on the problem. Keeping a clean mouth by brushing and flossing often is important. We will see about the mouth. It is also known as oral cavity. The mouth is the hollow cavity that allows food and air to enter the body. The mouth contains many other organs such as teeth, tongue and the ducts of the salivary glands. that work together to aid in the ingestion and digestion of food the mouth also plays a major role in the production of speech through the movements of the tongue lips and cheeks mouth plays an important role in eating drinking breathing and speaking infants are born with a suckling reflex by which they instinctively known to suck for nourishment using their lips and jaw The mouth also helps in chewing and biting food. Mouth ulcer facts they are very common and painful, annoying and sometimes embarrassing. They are red breaks in the lining of the mouth. The pain is caused by the nerves just below the surface of the lining of the mouth becoming exposed. Luckily, most mouth ulcers are easy to treat. Some common mouth problems include cold sores, painful sores on the lips and around the mouth caused by a virus. Canker sores, they are very painful sores in the mouth caused by bacteria or viruses. Thrush, a yeast infection that causes white patches in the mouth. Leukoplakia, white patches of excess cell growth on the cheeks, gums or tongue. common in smokers dry mouth a lack of enough saliva caused by medications and certain diseases gum or tooth problems bad breath diseases related mouth ulcers there are some serious causes of mouth ulcer can be symptoms of herpes infection sex related infection that is canker sores inflammatory bowel disease leukoplakia gingivostomatitis oral cancer herpes simplex oral thrush and immune disorders if mouth ulcers are a symptom of a disease they are usually accompanied by other symptoms in the body but not always mouth ulcers last between 1 to 2 weeks If mouth ulcers do not heal it could be a sign of disease that needs medical attention causes of mouth ulcers trauma or damage related mouth ulcers is very common damage from brushing your teeth too vigorously from orthodontic braces or biting the inside of your mouth next we will see about the dietary management and treatment for each mouth ulcers some treatments will require the source or cause of the mouth ulcer being removed or disease treated for most mouth ulcers treatment is easy and effective pain relief creams wafers available from your drug store cooling mouth rinses of cold water prevention of mouth ulcers prevent mouth ulcers with good oral hygiene eating a healthy diet good intake of vitamin b c and zinc avoiding very hot drinks and food 
by reducing stress. Stomatitis is a general term for an inflamed or and sore mouth can disrupt a person's ability to eat, talk and sleep. Stomatitis can occur anywhere in the mouth including the inside of the cheeks, gums, tongue, lips and palate. Types of stomatitis. First one is canker sore. A canker sore also known as efficacious ulcer is a single pale or yellow ulcer with a red outer ring or a cluster of such ulcers in the mouth usually on the cheeks tongue or inside the lip cold sores are also called as fever blisters cold sores are fluid filled sores that occur on or around the lips they rarely form on the gums or the roof of the mouth Cold sores later cross over with the scab and are usually associated with tingling, tenderness or burning before the actual sores appear. Symptoms of Stomatitis Canker sores can be painful and incubation period usually lasts 5 to 10 days and they tend to come back, are generally not associated with fever. Cold sores are usually painful and the incubation period usually seen 7 to 10 days are sometimes associated with cold or flu-like symptoms. Causes of Stomatitis Canker sores Nobody knows that what exactly causes canker sores but many things may contribute to their development such as certain medications, trauma to the mouth, poor nutrition, stress, bacteria or viruses, lack of sleep, sudden weight loss and certain foods such as potatoes, citrus fruits, coffee, chocolate, cheese and nuts. Canker sores may also be related to a temporarily reduced immune system because of a cold or flu. Hormonal changes or low levels of vitamin B12 or folate. Even biting the inside of the cheek or chewing a sharp piece of food can trigger a canker core. So we will see treatment for this stomatitis. Mouth sores are generally don't last longer than two weeks even without treatment. If a cause can be identified your doctor may be able to treat it. If a cause cannot be identified the focus of treatment shifts to symptom relief. The following strategies might help to ease the pain and inflammation of mouth sores. Avoid hot beverages and foods as well as salty, spicy and citrus based foods. Use pain relievers like gargle with cool water or suck on ice pops if you have a mouth burn. For canker sores the aim of treatment is to relieve discomfort and guard against infection. Try following this one. Drink more water, rinse with salt water, practice proper dental care. Now we will see about the esophagus. The esophagus is one of the upper parts of the digestive system. At the mouth opening it is continuous with the back of the oral cavity passing down through the rare part of the mediastinum, through the diaphragm and into the stomach. The length of the esophagus is 25 centimeters or 10 inches. The word esophagus derives from the Greek word esophagios which means to carry, to eat. What causes esophagitis? Gastroesophageal reflex disease or GERD is the most common cause of esophagitis. When you have GERD, stomach acid and juices flow backward into your esophagus. This can irritate the esophagus. Infections Forms of infections esophagitis are typically seen in immunocompromised people. Types of these are fungal, candida, viral, herpes simplex, 
cytomegalovirus. Endoscopy can be used to distinguish among these conditions. Other causes include vitamins and mineral supplements such as vitamin C, iron and potassium pills and other medication. People who have a weak immune system are more likely to get esophagitis. This include people with HIV, diabetes or kidney problems as well older adults and people who take steroid medicine. What are the symptoms of esophagitis? Heartburn, pain when you swallow, trouble swallowing food or liquids, chest pain, it is just similar to heart attack. A cough, sometimes it also causes nausea or vomiting, fever, belly pain. These are all common symptoms of esophagitis. Treatment and dietary management and prevention of esophageous diseases. The treatment depends on what is causing the esophagitis. If esophagitis caused by an acid reflex of GERD, doctor will likely to recommend that to change the diet, lose weight if needed and make other lifestyle changes. Change your eating habits. It is best to eat several small meals instead of two or three large meals. After you eat, wait two to three hours before you lie down. Late night snacks are not always good. Chocolate, mint and alcohol can make GRD worse. They relax the valve between the esophagus and the stomach. Spicy foods that always have acid like tomatoes and oranges and coffee can make GERD symptoms worse in some people. If symptoms are worse after eating a certain food, stop eating that food to see the symptoms get better. Do not smoke or use smokeless tobacco. If a person has GERD symptoms at night, raise the person's head bed to 6 inches or to 8 inches. Now we will see about the stomach. The stomach is a muscular hollow dilated part of the digestive system which functions as an important organ of the digestive tract in many animals including vertebrates, echinoderms, insects and mollusks. It is involved in the second phase of digestion following mastication that is also known as chewing. In most vertebrates, the stomach is located between the esophagus and the small intestine. It secretes protein digesting enzymes called proteases and gastric acid to aid in food digestion. Through smooth muscular contractions, before sending partially digested food that is called as chyme to the small intestines. Digestion, a bolus, enters through the stomach through esophagus via the lower esophageal sphincter. The stomach releases proteases and HCl that is also called as hydrochloric acid which kills or inhibits bacteria and provides the acidic pH of 2 for the proteases to work. Food is churned by the stomach through muscular contractions of the wall called peristalsis reducing the volume of the fundus before looping around the fundus and the body of the stomach as the bolus are converted into chyme. Chyme slowly passes through the pyloric sphincter and into the duodenum of the small intestine where the extraction of nutrient begins. Depending on the quantity and contents of the meal, the stomach will digest the food into chyme anywhere between 40 minutes and a few hours. The average human stomach can comfortably hold about a liter of food. Gastric juice in the stomach also contains pepsinogen. HCL activates this 
inactive form of enzyme into the active form called pepsin. Pepsin breaks down proteins into polypeptides. Absorption of food. Although absorption is mainly a function of the small intestine, some absorption of certain small molecules nevertheless does occur in, in the stomach through its lining. We will see about the diseases of stomach. Digestive disorders are among the most common problems in healthcare. Approximately 30% to 40% of adults claim to have frequent indigestion. Dietary habits and specific food types can play a significant role in the onset. Treatment and prevention of many GI disorders that is gastrointestinal disorders. In many cases, diet can also play a role in improving patients sense of well-being. These are the diseases of stomach, peptic ulcer, constipation, diarrhea, colon cancer, regional enteritis, appendicitis, ulcerative cholecystitis, polyps, irritable colon, diverticulosis. So from all this we will be dealing about the peptic ulcer in detail today. First peptic ulcer. The term peptic ulcer is used to describe any localized erosion of the mucosal lining of those portions of the alimentary tract that come in contact with gastric juice. Disintegration of tissues can also result in necrosis. The majority of ulcers are found in the duodenum although they also occur in the esophagus, stomach or jejunum. Similar symptoms are produced by the ulcer regardless of its location and response to treatment is essentially the same. The factors that influence mucosal ability to withstand destructive action are first one is the integrity of mucosal cells. Second one is the ability of epithelial cells to degenerate themselves. Third one is the mucosal barrier and the fourth one is the blood supply. Various trop uh, topical irritants impair this tissue including aspirin, alcohol, certain drugs, caffeine or bile acids that may come in contact with the mucosa. Next one is duodenal ulcer. In this condition, hypersecretion of acid is found although tissue resistance is normal. Acid hypersecretion is attributed to an increased number of peritoneal cells and impaired rapid gastric emptying with loss of buffering effect. The next one is gastric ulcer. Factors that contribute to weakened mucosal resistance in patients with gastric ulcer revolve around poor nutrition, diminished mucosal blood flow and a defect in the inhibition of gastric acid and pepsin secretion. In gastric ulcer, both the back diffusion of hydrogen ions into the mucosa and reflex of bile are believed to be involved. An abnormality in the mucosa permits penetrations of hydrogen ions. Drugs such as aspirin and indomethacin can alter the gastric mucosal barrier. Next one is causes of all the peptic ulcer, duodenal ulcer and the abdominal ulcer. First one is bacterial infection. Helicobacter pyrrhi is the chief cause of ulcer. It is spiral shaped with gram negative unipolar flagellum. Infection is typically contracted in early childhood and remains for the rest of life. Next one is genetic factors. It is common in persons with blood group O than in those of other groups. Sex men are affected two to three times more frequently than women. Age the incidence is high between 20 and 40 years though the average age of incidence has increased. Stress 
people who are highly nervous and emotional and who worry fear and feel anxiety are particularly susceptible potentially irritant substances are caffeine ethanol aspirin and nicotine chilies pepper ginger garam masala meat soups and strong tea or coffee and protein rich foods increase secretion of acid and aggravate the condition high fiber diet in india the incidence of peptic ulcer is low where the staple diet is millet or wheat compared to rice eating areas emergency injuries stress ulcers occur in conjunction with emergency injuries such as burns or long term rehabilitation process symptoms and clinical findings discomfort and flatulence in upper part of abdomen the basis of for the pain may be the action of unneutralized hcl on exposed nerve fibers at the site of the ulcer pain is also associated with hypermotility of the stomach or gastric distension following ingestion of large amounts of food or liquids low plasma protein levels are often present and delay rapid and complete healing of the ulcer weight loss and iron deficiency anemia are common the intake of iron ascorbic acid and b complex vitamins particularly thiamine may be less than rda because of self imposed limitation of leafy green vegetables and other good source of these nutrients bleeding ulcers can result in vomiting known as hematitemitis that is dark brown in color now we will look after the dietary management it was customary to suggest bland diet for ulcer patients bland diet is a diet which is mechanically chemically and thermally non irritating mechanically irritating foods include those with indigestible carbohydrate such as whole grains and most raw fruits and vegetables foods believed to be chemically irritating because of their stimulatory effect on gastric secretion include meat extractives caffeine alcohol and some spicy foods foods believed to be thermally irritating are those ordinarily served as extremes of temperatures such as very hot or iced liquids may cause pain a more liberal individual approach prevails today in more clinical practice sound total nutrition there must be optimal overall nutritional intake to support recovery and maintain healthy tissue based on individual needs and food tolerance protein foods such as milk and protein foods do have some buffering effect but they also evoke gastric secretions more than carbohydrates and fats milk should be included as a source of nutrient factors for healing purposes fats such as cream butter and olive oil can be particularly helpful in a thin patient fried foods are not advised as they are difficult to digest and often aggravate the symptoms ascorbic acid it helps in wound healing hence citrus fruit juice and tomato juice can be given gas formers that is in addition certain foods traditionally forbidden include strongly flavored vegetables such as cabbage cauliflower onions and turnips and fried foods fiber a regular diet including good sources of dietary fiber has proved to be beneficial dietary guidelines for the peptic ulcer whether a patient is on bland diet or regular diet he needs to know which foods are needed for a nutritionally adequate diet and the importance of including these daily he should select food from a wide varieties of foods omitting 
those foods known to be distressing to the patient moderate use of seasonings are permitted regularity of meal times is essential that is i told you like before we should not take only two to three huge meals we have to take small frequent intervals of meals moderate amounts of food should be eaten the diet should be planned in consultation with patient taking into consideration his preferences cultural pattern and economic status meals eaten outside the house will not cause any problem if good judgment is used in food selection meals should be eaten in a relaxed atmosphere and should forget personal or family problems while eating a short rest before and after meals may conducive to greater enjoyment of meals smoking and drinking alcohol should be avoided particularly on an empty stomach good physical and mental health is basic and the patient should remember that anxiety and worry can upset digestion foods should be included dairy products like milk cream butter mild cheese and eggs steamed fish rice rice flakes puffed rice well cooked cereal semolina cooked green leafy vegetables custards malted drinks cooked pulses if they are not causing gas formation the foods which should be avoided alcohol strong tea coffee cola beverages gravies pickles spices chilies curries condiments all fried foods pastries cakes heavy sweets like halwa burfi raw unripe fruits raw vegetables like cucumber onions radish and tomatoes till now we have learned about the diseases of mouth esophagus and stomach and dietary management of all these organs uh, any problem that affects our mouth can make it hard to eat drink or even smile the esophagus is one of the upper parts of the digestive system at the mouth opening it is continuous with the back of the oral cavity passing downwards through the rear part of the mediastinum through the diaphragm and into the stomach now stomach can also sense independently to tongue and oral taste receptors glucose carbohydrates proteins and fats this allows the brain to link nutritional value of foods to their tastes if nutritious diet and personal hygiene are not maintained properly then the above diseases can be noticed and to prevent the above diseases in human beings proper dietary management and medication should be followed as we all discussed in the earlier we can again uh, remember this points and do it and maintain properly thank you